Imagine we used to have the, the, the cycles that would have centers in them. So on the customers, you have the customer center. And then on the vendor, you have the vendor center. And then on the payroll, you had the employees center. So we have similar concepts over here. Uh, so if you try to group that in your mind, you're like, how am I gonna figure out all these things on the left-hand side? Well, if you think, well, I've got, I could think about it this way by cycle, right? I have the revenue cycle or customer cycle, the vendor cycle, the employees cycle. So those I can think of as centers on the left-hand side. So the sales center is kind of like the revenue cycle or customer cycle. So if I go into the sales center, you can see I have the overview and all the stuff in it here. But if I just click on it, then all those options are up top in the tabs. So now you've got the overview. Uh, we've got the all sales. These are the transactions that happen for the sales side. We've got invoices. These are the things that we, when we build the client, the major tool that we're going to be using, we can create invoices from here as well as from here. So we can create invoices from multiple places. If I'm in the customer center or sales center, estimates, which are gonna be tracking if we have an estimate for a job before we actually invoice the job. We have our customers. So this is us tracking the people that we do business with that are gonna hopefully pay us so of course, if we have accounts payable that we're tracking, we do the work, we send out invoices, they haven't paid us yet, then this is gonna be a very important area so that we can try to track who owes us the money. And then we've got the products and services. These are the things that we use to populate the invoices, uh, such as the things we do, the, 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 the things that we sell, goods and services. And then on the expenses side, we have the expenses over here. This is going to be the expense center. Same thing. If you hit the drop down, this is kind of like where the vendor side of things is. So a lot of these forms could be found also in the expense center. If I look at the expenses tab, this is going to be the transactions. We can sort the transactions here. We'll get into this later with relation to the expenses or ultimately money going out. Bills represent things that we have entered a bill for but have not yet paid for. The vendors for our purposes, vendors means people that we are gonna be paying for, right? You might think this, vendors is a confusing term because uh, we might think of ourselves as a vendor because we sell stuff and we are a vendor if we sell stuff. But uh, for QuickBooks, you gotta remember which side of the table you're on. When QuickBooks says customers, we mean our customers, which is for me a little bit easier to click in my mind. When I hear vendor, I kind of like, I'm a vendor. Well, it's like, I'm also a customer because I buy stuff from other people. But when I'm looking at QuickBooks, I gotta, these, these terms could be used in common language on either side of the table. But for QuickBooks, you gotta know which side of the table they're talking about. If you're, if the vendors are the people that we buy stuff from, money's going out ultimately. And so then we have the people that we're buying stuff from down here on the list and then the contractors and then uh, the mileage, if we're tracking uh, mileage, uh, possibly for tax purposes, that's kind of a special area. We might have a little section on that to get in that in more detail if you want to. And then you have the employees. So that cycle is over here in the payroll. So the payroll cycle. So remember that we'll, we'll talk about payroll a little bit more later, but payroll is a special area in and of itself. And you have a primary question being, do you want to do payroll within QuickBooks or do you want to do payroll outside of QuickBooks using a third party provider like an ADP or a Paychex? So that's a big question that you want to make sure you think about if you have to deal with payroll because it's it's a pain to change payroll, <laughs> right? You like to get it done the, done correctly the first time if possible. Contractors, you have a question as to whether someone's a contractor or an employee with contractors. We have to deal with getting their information possibly to send out in the United States uh, to send out 1099 forms and then workers comp, again, an issue with which is related to the payroll. So those are the primary centers here. Now, the other big center that you'll be dealing with all the time is going to be the banking information, cash, the cash flowing in and out. So that's going to be in your transactions over here. Note that 
most people, when you use QuickBooks, you, you might, you're probably going to want to connect to the bank feeds. And we will do that. We'll talk about connecting to the bank feeds. But the first practice problem we work through, we're going to do it without connecting to the bank feeds so that you can see the cycle of the process. Because when you connect to the bank feeds, they it's kind of advertised and people often feel like everything's going to be automated really easily to connect to the bank feeds. And some companies, it is really easy, but other companies, it's not as easy. And once you connect to the bank feed, all of this information is going to pull in here to what I call bank feed limbo. And you're going to have to know what to do to pull it from here into your financial statements. How do you know what to do to pull it from here into the financial statements? You have to understand the normal accounting cycle and how the bank feeds fit in it. So that's why the first part of the course, we're going to just do uh, normal accounting without the bank feed, the whole process. And then we'll think about how the bank feeds can fit in depending on the type of business that we have. But for for many companies, obviously, this would be another another common area that we would be working in a lot of the times. We'd be in the transactions. These are the bank transactions. Here's the different accounts that you could have connected, checking accounts, savings accounts, credit card accounts are the common transactions. We also have app transactions. We might have a special uh, course that looks at, or a special part or a special uh, section that looks at this in a little bit more detail. If you use Shopify or eBay or Amazon, then you have some options in terms of how you're gonna get the information pulled in from those online resources. And they have these resources uh, here for that, which is nice. And you've got these app transactions, which is a specialized area for those types of things. And then uh, your receipts, you can upload uh, your receipts here and possibly attach receipts, for example, uh, to certain forms, which can help you with your audit trail. And then your reconcile information is here. 